Welcome back to People, Power, and Politics with Fred Toll on 1039 LI News Radio. New York, New York. I want to wake up in a city that never sleeps and find. Welcome back to People, Power, and Politics here on LI News Radio 103.9. I'm your host, Fred Tall, and we're broadcasting live from Islip MacArthur Airport. Nothing ever better to put me in a better mood than listen to Frank Sinatra. It's almost sacrilegious to have to cut that song off. I really, I really get upset when we have to do that, but the show must go on as the old story goes. And uh, today we are talking about some show. It's the... Uh, it's the charade show, I think, quite honestly, of the nonsense that Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone is portraying on the taxpayers of Suffolk County. His lack of support for the law enforcement community, particularly the Suffolk County Deputy Sheriff's members, uh, one of the oldest law enforcement agencies in the county uh, that are responsible. Deputies are responsible, as we've talked about for the last two hours of doing orders of protection, uh, doing judgments uh, and enforcement of that the transportation of prisoners here in Suffolk County from uh, point A to point B, um, and a host of other activities, particularly in eastern Suffolk County. And they're one of many law enforcement agencies within the county. We have the Suffolk County PBA and detective investigators and superior officers and probation officers. And at one point we had the park police. And uh, who am I leaving off? The DA investigators and uh, uh, corrections officers, of course, I think I think that's everybody. I think I might have got everybody in one shot. And they clearly are, I believe, some of the most important employees that we have in Suffolk County because they protect my family and yours. They protect my son and your children. Uh, they deal with criminals and they deal with the most horrible element of society day in and day out. Um, in many instances, they make a very good dollar. In some instances, they should make a much better dollar. We clearly don't have enough of any law enforcement agency as far as I'm concerned. There's no abundance of additional people sitting around doing nothing. Uh, law enforcement, protection, public safety, as far as I'm concerned, a former elected official, former staff person, is the number one responsibility of county government. It is their first and sole priority, and then everything else comes second as far as I'm concerned. And Steve Ballone has seriously tripped and fallen on the job as far as I'm concerned in this instance. Um, voiding an agreement that was in place by the last county executive, signed and agreed to by all parties and approved by legal uh, officials. Bad move, Steve. Um, voiding the agreement and not returning the givebacks, bad move. You got sued in court, you lost there. You've gone to PERB and you've lost there. Um, and now you guys are forced to take him to court in federal court, like you said, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. County is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're going to have to pay you back the money. There's no two ways about that. I, I don't need to be a judge or a psychic to predict, holy cow, somebody at some point is going to say, return the deputy sheriff's money. And by the way, do it with interest and legal fees. So in the end, it's money in the bank for you guys. But to be tortured like this uh, unfairly and unjustly to me is wrong. We're pleased to have the president and executive vice president, John and Artie, in the studio with us today. And we've been talking about the important role that the deputy sheriffs have played, you know, in public safety here in Suffolk County. And we're talking about the situation with the county executive. What's the basis for the federal lawsuit? What did, what did you actually hear and what is your lawsuit specifically geared towards? So there's two parts to the lawsuit. The first being obviously to reclaim the $4 million that's owed to us. The other part of it is that we're alleging political retaliation on the part of the county executive. And you really don't need to do much investigating to look at what's going on here in, in Suffolk County. If um, he, he received a lot of support uh, from the police unions and, and they reap the benefit, and, and we don't begrudge them that. But at the same time, you can't turn around and, and take care of one group of people and then treat another group of people so horribly. Yeah. And, and that's all we're asking. We, we've never asked for special treatment. We're simply asked to be treated like all the other unions have been treated. 
and I don't think that's too much to ask. Yeah, he, he really, he being the county executive, doesn't have such a great track record, as far as I'm concerned, in dealing with the unions. I mean, one only needs to look down the road here on Vets Highway over to Orville Drive, where the headquarters of the Suffolk County Association of Municipal Employees uh, has their main offices, that union, uh, with their new president, Dan Wevler. Um, that union... Uh, new president was elected, Dan Farrell. I did some work for Dan and for Ames, so I'm quite familiar with uh, their operations. I worked there for a year, so I want to disclose that in full disclosure. You know, during my year there, he, the county executive laid off a thousand AIM workers. So, you know, who are those people? They are crossing guards. They are food sanitarians who go in and inspect restaurants. They are people who work in our parks department and open up our parks. They are people that worked in the infirmary to help uh, help uh, elderly residents and to help uh, sick individuals that had no other safety net. There are public health nurses. There are educators that promote health programs to children and families in need. There are social service workers. I mean, under this county executive's leadership, the county controller, John Kennedy, and uh, his predecessor, Joe Sawicki, uncovered two outside agencies that had overbilled the county by $4 million. And uh, those expenditures and payments were continuing through social services, not because social services didn't care, not because the employees are doing a bad job there or don't know what they're doing. It happened because there's not enough employees and things fall between the cracks. Um, no different than what I hear from a lot of our youth ser service agencies who billings, you know, they bill the county monthly for the services they provide as an outside agency. I've heard stories of agencies waiting 120 days to get paid where the agency is contemplating closing their doors, Steve Ballone, uh, closing the doors, not providing services because your administration is not paying its bills. Um, you know, we go back to AIM, and, you know, obviously there was a huge upheaval in AIM about uh, almost a year ago. A new team was elected. That team was led by a gentleman named Brian Mackery. And uh, the county executive, after doing the layoffs, did a contract with AIM where they had no layoffs, uh, that no layoff clause, similar to what you did in your memorandum of agreement with the county executive. And uh, he had talked about a, a furlough, you know, a leg payroll, uh, I guess 20 Fridays uh, taking off uh, where these individuals would, you know, their pay would be put into a bank as opposed to the county paying them. And then when they leave service, they would uh, then be paid for that time at the end of the service. Of course, they'd be at a much higher salary level, so that payout would be a lot, but Steve Malone was looking to defer that money and try to save money to deal with the county's deficit. Instead of actually really trying to deal with the county's deficit, he's trying to put it on the back of the workforce, such as your members and Ames members. And then he came up with a cockamamie idea to raid or to not put in the county's contribution to the benefit fund, which was $12 million. Um, and that $12 million from the benefit fund was uh, was uh, from your union, from AIM, from probation, from uh, corrections officers, uh, from park police. You guys are all part of that same benefit fund. So he wanted to defer or move the payment of the $12 million. Um, AIM decided to put that up for a vote to their members, which was good. But however, uh, truth be told, Brian Macri, the president, just resigned. You know, the story that's out there was health reasons, and I'm hoping that's not true for Brian's sake. Nice enough guy. I hope he doesn't have any health problems. But the real truth of the matter is that, you know, Brian signed that agreement uh, for the $12 million deferment uh, with no interest to the benefit fund, just so it would be paid back, I guess, over 12 years before the members actually took a vote. So the, that union was going to bring Brian up on charges, and uh, Brian decided to get out of Dodge. I think that's really what happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so on top of, you know, taking $4 million from your members, some portion of that $12 million also would have went to your members because you're part of that benefit fund. Correct. And, and we've we've actually become a cautionary tale to other unions, and, and I think that's why AME was hesitant to enter into this agreement because nothing the, matters the, the, the everybody tells you he's a, a liar right the county mm -hmm. doesn't have a track record of living up to their agreement or to be honest we've got a call from frank in bayport frank how are you oh hi frank how are you this is frank from bayport hi this is fred frank how are you fred i'm sorry fred that's okay um this discussion has been riveting and uh like i said i live in bayport and i've been confused by so many of the different issues going on with the steve Ballone administration um 
all these things that I keep leaking out with the sheriff's deputies is just mind boggling. Yeah, it's just amazing myself. I sit here in amazement. I did 18 and a half years in county government as a staff person and as a legislator, and I've never heard of such nonsense and shenanigans uh, against the like workforce. Corruption. I mean, do you feel that the things that he's doing, are, are they criminal, That what he's doing? Is anything fall into the category of criminal, what he's doing? In, with incompetence, the mismanagement, maybe. Criminal, probably not. But I don't practice law without a license, so I'm not a lawyer. I leave that up to our good man, uh, Suffolk County District Attorney Tom Spoda. But yeah. I, I, quite honestly, I just think you know that when you sign an agreement, it's a contract. When you sign a contract, you need to do your end of the contract. The other party needs to do their end of the contract. And when they don't, uh, that really is a shame. The only person that gets hurt there is the taxpayer. That's exactly, exactly. And like I said, being a taxpayer, I, I know all about that. And and it just also the uh, the amount of money that's going to be put onto the taxpayers, whether some of them know it or some of them don't, this is going to be costing them a lot of money, yeah. um, extra money that seems unnecessary for the for the lawsuit and all the litigation that's going to be going on due to. Yeah, it's just mind-boggling to me. I mean, you know, look, four million dollars is a lot of money. I don't want to minimize that in any. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't want to minimize that in any way, shape, or form. But we're not talking about forty million dollars. You know, we're talking about four. So, so there comes a point, you know, in running a business where one must say, "Hey, look, this has cost me a half a million dollars to fight." handing back this $4 million. So now it's $4.5 million. Plus, I'm going to have to pay interest on that. So what's that, another half million? So now I'm up to five. Then right. what What expenses were paid by county staff? Now, now I'm up to 5.2. When I could have said to the deputies, look, we're going to give you the $4 million back, but I'm going to give it back to you a million a year. Right. I'm sure the deputies wouldn't have liked that, and I'm not going to put them on the spot, but I, I, I'm sh- and I'm not even going to have them answer that, by the way. Don't, because you're obviously involved in a lawsuit. But I'm going to just say, if I was a union president, I'd say, all right, look, I don't want you to hold my money, but if you're giving me back a million a year over you know, four years, I'm not going to fight with you. Let's move on for this. I am going to fight with you about taking away that responsibility, but I'm not going to fight with you on the money issue. You know, and, th- and that's really a shame that Steve Ballone has decided to play politics with law enforcement. He should be ashamed of himself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those the men and women of that job, the, the all the deputy sheriffs of the county, they, they put their lives on the line. Every Same thing with police day. officers, corrections, probation, detectives. Yes. I mean, as I said, this is not, you know, I'm not interested in pitting anybody against anybody. I don't think we have enough police officers. I don't think they're paid appropriately. I don't think they're treated appropriately. And I've said it publicly, and I'm going to continue to say it publicly to the day I die. Frank, we really appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for all your comments. I really appreciate you listening to me. Have a good day. Thank you. Too. You too. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's nice to hear some of the taxpayers actually call in and, uh, you know, agree that you guys are getting the short end of the stick. I mean, I know it's no comfort, but right. and it doesn't resolve your problem, but it's good that the taxpayers are listening, and maybe we're getting some people's attention. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, one of the things when uh, Kevin Gwynn called in before is uh, we were talking about the— uh, you know, we've become a cautionary tale to other unions, and that really was one of the reasons this police conference got started, because you have uh, all these different smaller law enforcement agencies throughout the county that now have come together uh, to have a voice, because they can see that this is something that can happen to them. If it can happen to the deputy sheriffs, it can happen to East Hampton police, it can happen to the state police, because this conference was opened up not only to uh, police agencies, uh, you have corrections officers, court officers, uh, state police in there, it, it really uh, is a tremendous thing. And, and this is, again, one of the reasons for its formation. Well, you know, that's a good thing to have a group like that form for a host of reasons. It's not only in this particular instance where one group is not being treated fairly and persecuted against. And, and it, you know, just the math and the logic, I, I just, you know, no matter how I slice it, like you, don't like you, financially, it just doesn't make sense to do what he's doing. And, you know, if he has a reason have the courage to stand up as the county executive, the chief fiscal officer for the county of Suffolk. You were elected to do the job. How about doing it? One of which requires you to let the public know why you're doing something. And we stand ready any day, any time, any place. I will give him as much time as he needs. He will be treated with the respect of the office that he earned and has deserved and was elected to by the public. But I'm not going to let you say yes and no and black and white to answers that require more than yes and no and black and white. 
And he has been one of the most evasive and hiding county executives, as far as I'm concerned, as a person in the media. I, I'm, you know, I get tons of his press releases, and uh, and I think it's great that he's doing a marathon to raise money to help the veterans. But what are you doing to fix the budget in Suffolk County, Steve Ballone? That's the real question. What's your financial plan? You know, we're not the Tooth Fairy. We're not the Easter Bunny. We're not Santa Claus. We don't believe in, you know, magic and miracles. Two and two is four. Four and four is eight. It, it can't be 68. It can't be 21. It, it can't be numbers that are just not obtainable and imaginable. And it's good that your group has band together with other groups, other law enforcement officials all throughout Eastern Suffolk County. It's the first I heard about that. So that's I wish you guys much success with that. Kevin's a great guy. Um, Kevin lived in my legislative district. I've known him for a long time. We have a lot of mutual friends. He's very active in his community, you know, fighting for the community as well as a person in the law enforcement world. Um, and uh, it's a shame that, you know, your groups have to ban and waste time instead of fighting criminals. You have to fight the politicians. You have to fight the county executive. You have to fight his budget. You have to fight the legislature to make sure you get taken care of. Something seems to be wrong in that you know, concept to me as a person who has, you know, been chairman of a public safety committee, you have dealt with every law enforcement agency there is to deal with. I served many years as a staff person, dealt with budgets, was on the budget committee. So I understand the challenges that the county executive has. And what you have to do is you roll up your sleeves, show up to work and, you know, negotiate with people in good faith. You know, you can't say one thing and do another. It just doesn't seem fair to me. I imagine the other benefit of all your law enforcement groups getting together is you meet privately, you talk about some of the criminal issues that are going on in the components of your jurisdictions, and there may be things happening in other jurisdictions that are similar where you're able to, you know, bring and harness the resources, I would imagine. Well, that's exactly right. There was a, a situation in uh, Riverside where they were wanted to close the trooper barracks. Uh, so th this was one of the first times this uh, police conference rallied together uh, to voice our concerns on, on closing. You would never want to see a precinct closed down at any time. That's just not safe, especially in, in that area. Um, yeah, so, and the state resources out there, although increased during the summer months during the winter months they're almost non-existent correct right. you know and that and that's a major law enforcement I mean, you know you go upstate you go up into some of the upstate counties and there's you know uh state troopers all over the place which which is great you come down to long island and how many state troopers are assigned here i mean right. not a heck uh, not enough as far as i'm concerned for the contingent of people that we have year round in suffolk county and one of the other things is is an unfortunate aspect of, of this uh, highway patrol issue is that now you've you've have unions that were pitted against each other. So, with the creation of, of this police conference, if there are such issues, we now have a forum where we can we can talk about them and we can work cooperatively together. Uh, because you never want to see law enforcement agencies uh, not working together. That's that's not the point of it. Yeah, I mean, you want to see them working together to fight criminals, not fight each other. Correct. Yeah, it's, you know? de it's definitely not about the members. I mean, we have members in the other unions that are, you know, good friends, spouses, family members, brothers and sisters. So it's definitely not about that. Yeah. I, I, and I imagine it does put a strain on the working relationship. You know, you, you go to work and you're struggling to pay bills. You haven't had a contract. You haven't had a raise in six years. I mean, we understand that here at the radio station. We haven't, I've been here four months now. I haven't gotten a raise in four months. <laughs> and I complain every day to the station owner. It's gotten me nowhere so far, but now I'm taking to the airways to complain about it too. I think you need to form a union. Yeah, that's true. We don't want to mention those words here because <laughs> I'll be fired tomorrow and you guys will never be back on. Um, but uh, having said that, I, you know, for the law enforcement group, that's great. For the, but for the radio broadcasters like myself, there's only one of me. So I, I represent myself currently, but you know, if that number increases, then we'll come talk to you guys. But, uh, you know, John does treat us very well here, very fairly. I want to say that because I see them outside moving my car already as we're sitting here. But, uh, you know, it is uh, it really is a shame. I mean, I, I, I mean, I love the fact that you guys were able to come in today and talk a little bit about what your members do. Um, because, you know, obviously the only thing that people think of is dealing with prisoners. Um, and I never realized how bad the circumstances are. Um, you know, as far as no contract, as far as not having your $4 million returned, as far as co forcing you to spend 300 plus thousand dollars in lawsuits and no end in sight. Yes. You know, if the public wanted to learn more about your plight, 
um, or to get involved or to write letters of support or to reach out to the county executive or the members of the legislature and to tell them to treat you fairly, how would they get a hold of either of you? Is there a number or an email or a web page that they could reach out to to get more information? Yeah, we have a website. Uh, it's scdspba.net. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, a Twitter page. So uh, we are active in social media, and we, and, we, and we try and put a lot of the positive things that we do do for the county out there. Right. Uh, phone number two, if they wanted to get more information or follow up and write a letter on your behalf. I mean, could they call the office? Sure, you can call the office. It's uh, 631-289-1768. Guys, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. You spent two hours with us, which is a lot of time breaking everything down and explaining it. Hopefully, uh, Steve Ballone or people of his administration are listening and settle this dispute with the deputy sheriff sooner than later. Uh, appreciate you guys coming on the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank you listen- so much for it. Thank you. You're listening to People, Power, and Politics, and we'll be back tomorrow, myself and Tom, and we'll be breaking down some uh, local news and then heading over to the Trump uh, look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family.